What is going on everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. My name is Brayden and if you are familiar with this channel you'll know I can get a little bit obsessive with making rocket finishes look super super nice. Now if you're familiar with the Crazy John build that we've talked about this thing I am also on a quest for perfection because the rocket I originally had that this is based off of was in virtually perfect shape thanks to Crazy Jim Hendrickson's attention to detail. So what we're going to do today is we're going to test out this new filler that Taylor turned me on to. If you don't know who Taylor is, check out the Rocket channel on YouTube. The link is in the description. But this glazing putty apparently sands about 50% faster than Bondo glazing putty, which sounds phenomenal. So we're going to give that a shot. But first, what we're going to do is take a measurement of this tube because if you'll recall, this tube wasn't two pieces when I put, when I first got this kit and I cut it in two and I tried my best to get a straight cut but I also cut it by hand with an X-Acto knife using a piece of printer paper to true the end. Once again, thank you for tuning into Rocket Vlogs. If you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. The goal is to hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year and I'll be giving away a level three size seven and a half inch Patriot rocket kit if we can reach that goal. So please hit the subscribe button and let's get to work. I'm really hoping for, wow, that's light. I'm really hoping for consistency here on both sides of the tubes that I cut because that would ideally mean that my fiberglassing job was pretty good and consistent. So what I like to do to make sure I'm at the center of tubes when I'm measuring something like this is give it a couple passes and just kind of let, let it figure itself out. And it looks like we're landing on 102.8 millimeters which is 4.04 inches, which makes perfect sense. And then which side is the side that I cut? That would be this side. And it looks like that is pretty much identical. Look at that. I did a good job. So we're gonna take that 102.8 millimeter measurement and go do some 3D design work. Also forgive the mess that my little office space is here right now. It's been a crazy, couple of days I'd know it needs clean I'm going to do it I know there's a few of you that love to pay close attention to the background and how messy things are so there you go I've had a couple people ask me about my 3d printer setup it's just an ender 3 v2 with some very basic modifications the BL touch auto leveling system and it also has custom firmware that I loaded so you can do manual override on the bed leveling and um, I very meticulously about every three months will change the nozzle and then I meticulously sit here with a piece of paper or using the BL touch and the manual override to specifically level the bed and then of course I do an auto level before every print so um, I try to keep it as level and perfect as I can keep it and then I also spray the bed with Aquanet every once in a while um, clean it with rubbing alcohol very meticulously first spray it with Aquanet obviously take it out of the enclosure and off the printer to do that and then uh, I let it, while the Aquanet's still drying, I set it on the heated plate, which I know a lot of people take issue with the fumes getting into the fan and everything, but in my theory is that by the time it's sitting there, all the aerosol stuff is pretty much gone. I don't know if there's actually any merit to that. But yeah, pretty basic stuff, and I just try to keep it ready. I don't 3D print a lot of stuff, but I do try to keep it nice and concise so that everything is just, I can just plug stuff in and print it and not have to deal with problems for half an hour or an hour or two hours like I've experienced in the past so I try to keep on top of the maintenance it's in a cheap enclosure because I pretty much exclusively print PETG just cuz uh... can I guess I don't know I don't really it's like the same price as PLA and I get really high quality prints so I don't, I don't have any reason to go to PLA plus or anything like that but we are preheating oh yeah that's the other thing this custom firmware does is it lets you set preheat seatings based on what material you're using and you can adjust that so right now we're just going to level active create new mesh let it auto level I would really like to go to direct drive but I'm kind of over taking it apart and messing with it for now so The back door is open for those uh, worried about ventilation, by the way. 
Okay, here's something I love about using this stuff so far is that it dries super fast. So instead of having to repaint and do whatever and see what else, you just very meticulously take forever and wait for the Bondo glazing putty to dry. You can kind of start handling it within like 10 minutes. So that's still a little tacky right there. So what I'm doing is just going over areas that I can still feel, putting circles around them. And then I'm gonna make one last batch of this stuff. And we're gonna give it one more run and try and get all the problem areas we have on both pieces of the airframe. And then hopefully we'll just have it ready to go and we'll just sand it and then prime it again and we'll be done. So definitely sanding is easier than Bondo, but I still went a little heavy with it. So if you use this stuff, use it as thin as you can because this is going to be quite, uh, quite the excursion. But this tube feels probably as close to perfect as I will ever get any fiberglass to airframe. So I'm gonna hit that with some rubbing alcohol and then I'll probably spray this with filler primer just to take a look at it and then on to sanding this guy. All right guys, it's been an hour since I saw you last. This is getting pretty absurd, but remember, the quality of your finish depends on what's underneath it and the effort you put into it after it's on. But either way, you're going to do a lot of sanding if you want to finish like this. So it's best to just do it early, prime it, and then whatever you have left, refill it and uh, go from there. I've only got a little bit more to do, and then I'm going to clean this all off with rubbing alcohol. It's looking pretty dang good, but not quite perfect. There's still a few minor things here and there that I need to make some adjustments to, like that guy right there, but otherwise looking pretty good. All right, we're sanded. Uh, somebody commented once that it was Interesting that I waited to put rail buttons on until after I painted it. It's because I'm deciding which side of the rocket I'm going to hide with the rail. Uh, in this case, I think it's this one. Um, overall, this one's going to be pretty, pretty good. Like the front of this fillet is still not perfect, but it's whatever. I might be able to give that a little bit more finesse, but I don't think I really need to. We're really splitting hairs at this point, so. It is what it is. Um, I went ahead and just went back to the paper method for straightening the cut. And I think it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna do the other tube and then I guess we're gonna start spraying white. That's a pretty good fit. Look at that. This one's for the motorcycle people on the channel. There's my roommate's FZ09. Okay, I'll be honest, it didn't come out as good as I had hoped. There's still a lot of little bits and pieces that you can see thanks to the gloss white paint. But I think, I think we gotta cut our losses here. It, it's just a little too extreme to roll as far as sanding and filling that all again 
on. There's two coats of gloss white on there. I mean, it looks good. It looks really good. It looks better than a lot of stuff I've ever done before. You can't tell the tube or the fins are glass. It looks really, really nice. But there's still that part of me that's like, I was on this quest to make it flawless. But then if I do that, you know the rule, it's gonna get lost. So I think we just leave it where it's at. So I was gonna do this whole video topic I'm going to show you guys how you can make satin paint look glossy because I didn't have the apple red that I needed in gloss. I don't know how well you can see that texture, how it looks like 60 grit sandpaper. That's what it feels like too. Um, I had a really nice couple coats on there, the red, and it was great. And then this morning when I went to shoot it, uh, it just started spraying plaster for some reason. So now I'm going to have to sand that entire nose cone down. So now my internal debate with myself on this is if I want to wet sand it and throw some clear over it and give it some super nice depth, but I don't think I do. I think I'm content with it where it's at. Plus, uh, more clear coat, more sanding, more filler is just going to make it a little bit heavier. And I'm pretty good with where it's at. It's light and it looks beyond good enough for, for a four inch simple cheap rocket that I paid like 60 bucks for. Wet sanding, this has an extra special step in it because it's a cardboard tube still. Even though it's got fiberglass and a bunch of paint on it, obviously for one, we're starting with a clean piece of sandpaper so we're not putting red paint in our white paint. And being very, caref being very careful not to uh, you get any red paint residue that's still wet near the tube because red's going to show very obviously on white. What we're going to do is get the sandpaper wet, but we have to keep it relatively dry, if that makes sense. And we're going to consistently be wiping the tube off so no water gets to the cardboard on the inside. But I started with the payload tube because I wanted it to be a test bed for the fin can. Because I'm really afraid of messing it up and having to restart, but that's what happens sometimes. Got a little bit of water inside the tube, which, like I said, is kind of exactly what I didn't want to happen, but you just gotta make sure it doesn't stagnate there for a while. Okay, folks, now is where we play the waiting game. Um, I see a lot of people talking about how they have problems with Rust Oleum when they're painting, and I hate to inform you of this, but it is probably 99% of the time user error, and I only confidently say that as somebody who has committed pretty much every user error you could commit with Rust-Oleum or spray paint in general, read the cans because this is where the waiting game comes to play. I just sprayed some more white on the fin can, which means it's Sunday afternoon. I can't put clear coat on that until Tuesday, 48 hours. If the paint's not completely dry, but you don't do it fast enough, it causes shrinking. That's what you see all the wrinkling and stuff. The only thing I really don't have an answer for is what happened with the nose cone, but we solved that problem. We have a fresh can of paint. It seems to be spraying properly, so I'm going to take the nose cone out, give it another go here in a few minutes, and hopefully, because uh, that's been drying for about half an hour since I wet sanded it. It's only been about 18 hours since I sprayed that red, so there's a good chance I'm setting myself up for failure here and it's just going to wrinkle and fall apart. I'll let you guys know how that goes. I always like to push it, but with white, it's so finicky and I really just don't want to restart. So that uh, the upper tube has been sitting for about 24 hours and about 45 minutes since I wet sanded it. So I'm gonna wait till tomorrow afternoon to paint it. And then two days from now is when I think I'm just gonna skip the wet sanding on the fin can section and 
try and get a decent coat of clear on there uh, or two and then hopefully it'll be okay and I won't need to wet sand and buff that out but if I do need to wet sand and buff that out we'll do it it's winter I don't got anywhere to be no rockets to fly just yet but uh, yeah other than that we're just waiting so I'm gonna clean my workspace up here and that's gonna be pretty much it several days later my meticulous preferences have struck once again and I didn't like how the aero pack looked so I cut the extra half inch of tube off and I scraped a bunch of the paint off on accident with an exacto knife so I could order the flanged one so that it would sit half an inch closer to the rocket yes I actually did that and yes I actually just spent thirty dollars because I didn't like how that looked this place cleans up pretty nice huh? all right so the crazy John it came with the U.S. Army sticker, but it didn't come with the black bands that go around the airframe. And I'll throw some pictures in, but the Little John is one of those rockets where you can tell the military wasn't real specific about the layout of the decals or what decals went on it or what paint job to put on it. Um, there's a picture of it that looks just like that with no paint or no decals on it at all. Some of them just have this. Some of them are all white. A lot of them are all drab, obviously. Some of them have the bands around. Some of them have the bands and then another line connecting them. A lot of different options there. So I'm just gonna do the signature US Army sticker, sticker in the middle and then single band around the top and then single band around above the fins and that is going to be good. Now there are some really finite details. You get it nice and close, you can still see pieces of fiberglass cloth and all that and I just really don't care. So, is it the perfect finish? No, but it's pretty, pretty dang close for having that disaster of a fiberglass job with the overlapped um, sewed seam on there. That was a disaster and it took, you know, probably six or seven hours of work to get it to that point. That's enough. That's more than enough, as a matter of fact. I'm over it, it'll be fine. It looks really good from like this far away. So from another five feet back, or you know, 300 feet from a launch pad, pristine. Um, pretty soon I'm gonna be doing a video on glassing with sleeves, though that'll be pretty fun. Um, that's gonna be another Patreon thing. I don't know if I've gone over that rocket. Uh, I got a really cool another vintage rocket that uh, was from one of the Tripoli Idaho vendors from the early 2000s. And he just donated a bunch of stuff to the club and the club held a raffle to raise money for the club to just generally, generally raise money for the club and uh, I ended up winning it which is super cool because it's uh, a rocket I really really want. I have it now, but uh, we'll, we'll address that in another video. It's actually along similar lines to this little John because if you'll recall I bought this little John because I used to have a BSD little John. The kit that I got is a BSD kit, but it's a lot bigger. So we'll get to that at another point. For now, I'm going to whip up a quick design for some black bands and I'm going to cut them out of vinyl and then we are going to dress up the little John. All right, you guys know the vibes. Use that math, you learned. What is the circumference of my 4.04 .04 diameter tube? Yeah, yeah, two pi r. Let's just be concise with it. It's pi d. It's about 12 and three quarters, just a hair under. So I'm going to push this probably an eighth of an inch under 13 inches. That way we've got room for me to inevitably mess some things up. Um, the sticker, is the lettering is an inch and a half tall and I wanted it to be just a little bit thinner than that so I so this is going to come out hopefully about an inch and a quarter and uh, we're gonna cut two of these out of some black vinyl and then we will be on our merry way to making the crazy John pretty Honestly, I think the bands are a little thick, but again, 
That's just something we're going to live with now. There you go, the Crazy John. So, I do have one more thing to do for this video for you guys, so don't leave yet. I'm going to show you guys how to wet sand and cut and buff the paint on this nose cone. No clear coat on the nose cone, we're just going to cut and buff the actual Rust-Oleum paint. And you're going to be blown away by how good it looks. But uh, yeah, so I'm waiting for all my sandpaper to get delivered. I ordered a big bulk pack of various uh, grits up through 3000. I'll put the link in the description because it was only like $8. But yeah, there you go. The Crazy John. I changed my mind. Okay, okay. I mean it this time, I think. I'm pretty sure I like it like that better. Um, yeah, we're, the paint was not quite as ready to be messed with as I thought it was. It's been dry, drying for probably 28, 30 hours, but there's some fingerprints in there. Um, I'll see by the time my sandpaper gets here if I care enough to wet sand the white. Because what we can do, we can wet sand the white and we can do the same thing we're going to do with the red. And that is just buff the paint. I've done it plenty of times. Yes, I know, it's... you. Scratch the surface of the paint, it'll go dull over time or whatever, what have you. I'm trying to think of a rocket I have that's like that still, but the last one I did that too, I believe. No, that was metallic, so I didn't do it to that one. Maybe I did? I can't remember. I buffed out one rocket. I think it might have been my four inch rocket that's in the ground now, so it really doesn't matter. Um, or we can just suck it up and live with it, and again, it's just a rocket, we can just fly it. Or, or, I can wet sand it and we can clear coat over the vinyl, which is really scary because clear coat loves to not stick to vinyl very well. You almost have to dust it from like 10 feet away so that the next coat of clear has something to stick to. But the problem with clear coat is if you do too light of a coat, it's so painfully obvious. It's all sprinkled on. And if you go heavy enough for a nice clear finish, Sometimes it's too heavy and you get runs. And then you get to sand it all out again anyway. I don't quite know how I feel about any of that just yet, but I have another day or so before my sandpaper gets delivered, so I guess I can think about it. But we will for sure be doing the nose cone. Um, I'm a little concerned about whether or not there's enough paint up top to sand. We're gonna be very, very careful. If I sand through it, a little touch of paint, you know that's the first thing paint comes off of on a rocket because it think on the ground and so who cares really, but you know, that's just me and my obsessive nature. So but anyway, there you go, Crazy John. To be continued. Okay, so this is sanded out to 2000 grit. If you were really, really about this life and you wanted just crystal clear, perfect reflection, amazing, perfect paint job, what you do is stop right here, let this dry for 24 to 48 hours and then spray clear coat, two or three coats and do this whole thing over again, except start maybe at 600 grit, go 600 through 2500 or 3000 and then you'll buff it but I'm not that concerned about it. So what we're gonna do, you can see uh, if I had gone with a heavier grit sandpaper, all these marks here, those are still low spots and it would be a lot better if those were all knocked down smooth and perfect, but I'm afraid of going through the paint. So this would be a perfect foundation for spraying clear on top of and having like a killer, killer finish. But I'm just gonna buff this out with 3000 grit, which is basically just going to be polishing at this point and then we'll hit it with some cutting compound or maybe just some wax and then I'm done. All right, very bright studio light is out, mostly because I want that reflection in the nose cone. So you guys can see what kind of a difference this makes. First, we're gonna use this stuff. Usually I like Meguiar's 105, but I couldn't find any for sale locally. So we're just going with this. Do not use this if you're going to put decals on it because this has a cleaner in it, which might make your adhesive not stick. 
But since this is just the nose cone, it's fine. Also, yes, in case anyone cares to notice, I did hit it on my ceiling and chip some paint off the tip of the nose, whatever. Okay, that's already starting to look pretty good. So now time for wax. Using regular old turtle wax for this. Trying to put a decent amount of pressure on it, but the way I have to hold it is a little bit difficult for the upper parts of the nose cone. We need a clean piece of towel. Actually, let me just get a different microfiber out. And you just rub the wax off. There you go. So not quite like perfect clarity on that light reflection there. But uh, overall, more than good enough, especially since I chipped the tip anyway. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just spray a little bit of this paint into something and dab it on there with a, a Q-tip or something, if I even care enough to do that because, you know, it's just gonna happen again when it flies. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, that is finishing the Crazy John from making all the fiberglass relatively level to buffing out the nose cone to a near perfect finish. We'll say it feels ridiculously good. Like, it feels like this is a blow molded red plastic nose cone that's not paint. Super cool, and this thing's super light, actually. Let me grab the scale real fast, let's see. Still doesn't have electronics in it, but I can't believe how light this thing came out. It's fully painted with the decals and everything. We are only at three pounds, four ounces. That's crazy. And that's with recovery gear and the coupler, all that. That's just not bulkheads or a main chute. Other than that, things pretty dang light. So if we can keep it around five pounds or so, ready for a motor in it. That's gonna be uh, pretty substantial. At any rate, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Yes, it was really dumb of me to wear a white shirt while I was wet sanding red paint. Who would have thought, right? As usual, I wanna give a special thank you to all my Patreon supporters and channel members. Those are the names you see scrolling across the screen right now. You unfortunately just missed your opportunity to win a free four inch Mad Cow Rocket in my quarterly caption contest on Patreon, but if you want to take part in the next one, every quarter I give away a rocket with a value between $75 and $100. For any patrons who are $5 or higher members, you can enter the contest, or you can join the channel membership. Alternatively, you can join Patreon for as little as a dollar. Channel membership, I believe, for $2. Otherwise, please just make sure you are subscribed. Our goal is to hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And leave me a like, drop a comment what you think of the Crazy John and its paint job and its decals and how well things went versus how well things could have gone. All said and done, it's not perfect. If you get up close, you can see little bits and divots and stuff from the fiberglass work, but uh, you can't see that from where you're at, and that's all that matters. Thank you guys so much. My name is Brayden, this is Rocky Vlogs, and I'll see you in the next video.